I'm here to talk to you about, uh, about our experience moving out to the country and uh, one of the challenges we ran into with, uh, with, uh, with mold. So we're gonna do um, yeah, three parts, mold and, and your health. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about home testing and inspection and some home remediation. And so um, I just wanna read a few uh, pieces of scripture that are pertaining to this. this is very interesting and very pertinent to us today as it was back to Moses and the Israelites after they left Egypt. This is from Leviticus 14, 33 through 40. And the Lord spake unto Moses, unto Aaron, saying, When ye come into the land of Canaan, which I give to you for a possession, and I put the plague of leprosy in a house of your land of your possession, and he that owneth the house shall come and tell the priest, saying, It seemeth to me that there, uh, that as it were, a plague in the house. Uh, and the priest shall command that, the, that they empty the house before the priest go into it and see the plague, and that all that is in the house be not made unclean. And afterward, the priest shall go in to see the house, and he shall look on the plague, and behold, if the plague be in the walls of the house, with hollow strakes, greenish or reddish, uh, which in the sight are lower than the wall, then the priest shall go out of the house to the door of the house and shut up the house for seven days. And the priest shall come again the seventh day and shall look at it. And behold, if the plague be spread in the walls of the house, this word plague too, as you look at some other translation is, uh, is translated mildew or, or, uh, or, or even mold. Then the priest shall command that they take away the stones, which the plague is, and they shall be cast them to an unclean place without the city. They're getting rid of the, of, the, of the materials used to even construct the house if, if you can't get rid of it. And, and he shall cause the house to be scraped within round about, and they shall pour out the dust that they scrape off without the city into an unclean place. And they shall take other stones and put them in place of those stones. There's a story here in Calhoun where I live of a house that was completely torn down because of, uh, of mildew. Uh, I don't have that article. Maybe next session I'll, I'll have that. And he shall take other mortar and shall plaster the house. And if the plague come again, and break out in the house. After that, he uh, he hath taken away the stones, and after he hath scraped the house, and after he has it plastered, then the priest shall come and look, and behold, if the plague be spread in the house, it is a fretting leprosy in the house. It is unclean, and he shall break down the house and the stones of it, and the timber thereof, and all the mortar of the house, and he shall carry them forth out of the city into an unclean place. And then finally, um, moreover, he that goeth into the house all the while that it is shut up shall be unclean until, until the even. This is very interesting. Uh, we keep this in mind. So whoever goes into the house, uh, it says, will be unclean until even. This is, this is what pertains to my story. And he that, that lieth in the house shall wash his clothes. And he that eateth in the house shall wash his clothes. And if the priest shall come in and look upon it, and behold, the plague had not spread in the house after the house was plastered, then the priest shall pronounce the house clean because the plague is healed. Okay, so a lot, lot of information. Oh, then finally, um, mold is even a curse in the Bible. One of the, the, 20, the, the, the infamous chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, they're claiming uh, uh, plagues or curses on people who, uh, who don't keep... Uh, uh, God's commands, these, these things that could come upon you. And the Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever and an inflammation and with an extreme burning and with the sword and with blasting. It's kind of a blight. And with mildew. They actually use the word mildew. And they shall pursue thee until thou perish. And so uh, mold, mildew, uh, mustiness, all these are, are, are the same name for the same problem. And that's, and that's mold. And um, this is a family of a uh, picture of my family when we moved into our country home, the first uh, first Thanksgiving, um, starting from uh, left to right, my daughter Jennifer and my wife Claudia, and of course that's me at the head of the table, and uh, we we three live in the main house and we built an apartment on the on the side of this house, which is only two bedroom two bath, and this is my son and uh, uh, and his and his wife Rebecca, and so uh, this is what the house looked like when we first bought it, the front of the house. And this is the uh, the rear of the house. And we uh, on the left here where we have the carport where we built finally built an, an extension. Um, my wife is uh, is from Brazil 
And uh, in Brazil, most of the houses there, well, I think all the houses are built out of concrete. And um, you go into many bathrooms there and you'll see black mold growing and growing in a house and they clean it with uh, with bleach. And uh, it's a common uh, a common uh, thing to, to, to have that and don't think much of it anyway. Um, and so after we got married, we moved to an apartment and then uh, we finally moved into a, a house and we actually had a problem with mold in, in that house, too, with uh, uh, with um, around our door. We lived in a very low area. And water would come down, kind of damp. And actually, we, we, the spirit of prophecy actually says, counsels us not to live in a in a low area like that. Anyway, um, we finally moved to our, our country home, and uh, and we noticed some things like um, and the hardwood floor in front of the dishwasher was wavy, and uh, and but we wanted the house so badly, we didn't care, we didn't care what. Well, we we could fix it. We said, oh, my son's in hardwood flooring, and we could fix it. We could fix it. So. We moved into the house, and um, and before we moved into the house, I want to explain something else that happened. We had put all my stuff in storage in my mother's house. My mother has a huge house and a huge basement, and um, and she wasn't using it for anything. And so we we stored all our books, and uh, I had like forty boxes of books. And before we moved, and uh, and and we put uh, furniture down there, and uh, lots of things that we we had. Uh, we stored in there for, for several years until we finally moved to the, the country. And my mother, um, that, the, her house actually uh, started having mold problems and mildew problems herself because she would, um, in order to save money, would, um, would turn off the air conditioner and, and the heat. And it got really damp inside the house. And it got uh, every, all our stuff, all our, clo- all our stuff we had in the basement stored, the clothes, the, uh, the books, um, all started actually it came to the point where it was growing fuzz on it white fuzz on everything and and it, it was I don't know if it was a chicken or the egg but but um, but uh, we talked to some doctors and um, especially uh, natural paths and uh, mold in the house can cause cause Alzheimer's and, and dementia and my mother um, uh, st- turned off the air conditioning and heating and she just and we told her she needed to get out of that house and uh, and she wouldn't uh, for year after year after year. Her dementia got worse and worse, and uh, and now she's in a in a nursing home right now uh, with um, I mean, practically uh, well she she's in hospice right now unfortunately, but it's all from dementia, from um, uh, from from most likely from from mold mold induced uh, uh, definitely a, a huge contributing factor. But anyway. Um, We'll talk more about that uh, afterwards. But we actually brought my mother to, to our house to uh, to help rehabilitate her um, uh, at, a, at a later date. We find out we found out about the mold problem. But but anyway, um, we moved into our uh, into our country home and we brought everything out of the, out of my mother's basement into the house. And so uh, what we did was uh, unknowingly we contaminated all our cars with mold and contaminated because where we transported all the stuff, contaminated our house with, with moldy books and mold, all this stuff of mold. And, um, and then plus um, we later found out that underneath the dishwasher in the kitchen, uh, there was a leak and it was, what was happening was it was causing black mold to grow under the dishwasher and underneath the cabinet, there was actually a vent which came up from the bottom of the floor, and it was, and it was, and it, it wasn't uh, ducted. It didn't have a pipe going out to the front of the cabinet. And and what happened was, um, as the the, the mold uh, grew, hot air blew across it, and it blew blew across the floor into a vent that was in the front. And and it and uh, we learned later through um, we actually hired a mold. Uh, um, consultant. We actually flew him in from Washington, D.C. Now, you're not going to have to do this, okay? You're going to learn a lot here without having to fly in a mold consultant because we basically he taught us how to handle this our, ourselves with the, he was all about saving money, but he was one of the top in the nation and, and we brought him in to inspect my mother's house and, and our house. And so uh, I'm going to show you a slide about him a, 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 a little later in this presentation. But anyway, um, he taught us that the three things that that, uh, that 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 cause that make mold a problem that you need for mold to be a problem. Number one is a, is a moisture source, uh, and that of course was water under the dishwasher. And number two is you need um, drying. Uh, 
you need to you need to not only but to, to have moisture to grow the mold, but also it needs to dry. And then the third thing you need is airflow. And those those three things were fulfilled right there. And the reason why is because when when um, mold dries, it has a defense mechanism and it releases something called mycotoxins. And then when the when the air blows across it, that's how it spreads through the house. And you breathe those in, you it's going to make you very sick. Now you're saying, well, well, I've had a lot of mold and I, I never got sick before. And, and, uh, or I had mold in my house and, and that's, and that's what causes so many problems is that there could be some people in the house, everybody in the house is fine, except one house member is, is having terrible, is terrible sickness because of the, um, because of the mold. And it's because, uh, is, is that most of the population can process the toxins from molds, but there's about 28% which have a, a genetic mutation, the MTHFR uh, gene, uh, double, uh, single mutation or double mutation, which prevents you from processing the toxins coming from uh, off a of mold. And so what happened was, after we moved into the house, my wife uh, would travel down to, uh, to an hour south to do uh, tutoring for uh, uh, English second language for Brazilians. And uh, many of the houses that she went to uh, had mold in them because it was low, low people coming from Brazil don't make much money. They're just starting a new life and they're living in a old apartments and many of them are musty and mildewy. And, and she would, and she would go to these places and uh, we, we never even thought much of it, you know, we'd see black mold up in the corner of the, of the house or in the bathroom, you know, and anyway. Um, and so uh, another th problem we had in our house too was uh, the, it, for some reason it was very tight and um, built very tightly. And so uh, it caught, whenever we had a lot of cooking going on in the kitchen, the, we actually had like water condensating on the window. So it was very humid in the house, okay, very humid. My, my wife never liked it, the uh, air conditioning very high because she, she's from the tropics. And so uh, 78, 80 degrees in the summertime in the house, no problem. But you, uh, then when you don't have the air conditioner on, you have a lot of, uh, uh, moisture in the air because the air conditioner takes out moisture. If you have it is 72 or 68, it, it takes the moisture out of the air continuously. And so the, the, these factors were, was, was a huge mold overload for us. And, and, uh, and that was uh, the, the, all the, the stuff we brought from my mother's house, the, uh, the mold underneath the, uh, the dishwasher and, uh, and the high humidity in the house. And so my wife started developing um, digestive issues where she couldn't eat one food after another, after another, after another. And, 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 she, and she found out that, um, um, that uh, through a testing, we actually, we went, we actually started uh, looking for a doctor that could help. And uh, that's when my wife came, came across uh, Dr. Wes Youngberg, uh, Seventh-day Adventist uh, doctor. And uh, he um, uh, said, you know, I think you have... Um, I think you have mold toxicity is what, what, what you have. And then the, so, so the problem was is that she could eat many foods and start losing a lot of weight. And her weight's usually like 120, 130. Well, she got down to about 103 in, in our house. And um, anyway, we started uh, uh, getting um, uh, doing some research and, and found people um, who had had this problem. And one of the first thing I do is do a mold testing on the house. And we did mold testing. And I'm going to tell you how to, how to do that. And, and our, our house tested high, high for mold. And, this, and then um, that's when we decided to bring in a, a mold consultant uh, from, uh, from Washington, DC. I have a slide with his name and all the contact information. And he came and inspected my mother's house and, and, and you know, confirmed that we had a huge mold problem that my mother had to move out of that house or else she was just gonna get sicker and sicker and, sicker and, and eventually, eventually die in the house. We finally got her out. But unfortunately, uh, the dementia was very, very advanced by the time we got her out of the house. And then um, and also she told told us that we got to get out of, out of our house and get our house uh, re, uh, rehabbed uh, or, or um, uh, re, to get the, the, the mold uh, re, um, remediation. It's called remediation. Yes, we had, we had to get our house remediated. And he we went through a plan on how to do that, how to get our house re remediated. And so. Um, Anyway, uh, so um, the problem was is that we needed a place to live. One, one of the, 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 the uh, 
councils is uh, from from the from these people who have problems with the mold toxicity. And uh, and and another thing is that my wife wasn't the only one who had who had mold the, 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 these issues with, with losing weight and, and her appetite. And uh, oh, another thing which which is which is horrible how my wife is panic attacks and heart palpitations and and just um, horrible horrible panic attacks and like she couldn't breathe. And um, and and she got worse and worse and worse and and um, and so. Uh, we with the different uh, advice and counsels we got from the doctor was to you need to move out you need to move out and uh and and get your house cleaned up and so what we had to do is we had to buy a trailer we bought a trailer and we um we put it outside and my wife didn't want to move into it uh she, she didn't want to go in there you know into the trailer and i had to go buy, buy a new one too unfortunately because she didn't want to use one she's afraid of mildew and that but the problem with the new one is is that there's um, the fumes coming off of uh, all the new the new stuff the new car smell is, is in there and so um, but it was so it's a trade off so I bought one that was um, it was by uh, um, it was called green it was green certified so there was no press board in it or anything like that and so uh, we 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 brought that in and, and then we um, now the issue is this is this is this is um, where it starts getting difficult you just can't pack up and move in you have because what happens is your clothes are, are saturated with um with the with the mycotoxins from the air and so you could wash them uh but sometimes it's not always uh always a hundred percent uh effective uh you could there's a way of washing it with um uh baking soda and i want baking soda with um borax and uh and I'll get the, I'll get the, uh, the the mixture. But anyway, so um, in order to move in, you basically have to buy all brand new clothes. You can't take your old clothes with you. It's, it's just too risky. And so and so we bought some new clothes for my wife and moved her in. And then uh, uh, it was my turn too. And then, but the problem was I still have my office in the house. And then in order for me to come into the trailer, remember we read it and I told you to listen to it about Le in, Le in Leviticus about being unclean till even. And to wash your clothes. Well, before I could, if I, I, my office was still, I was working from home. My office was still at home. In order for me to get into the trailer, I had to strip. I, I basically was that night, so no one could see me without any clothes on. And I had to, I had to basically strip everything off. And then I come into the, into the trailer and then jump in the shower right away. So none of those clothes could come in from the house in order to contaminate, because it would contaminate the inside of the, of the brand new trailer. And so, um, I finally was able to get a brand new set of clothes and, uh, and I moved into the, uh, and I moved into the, in, into the trailer. And so, um, we put the trailer, uh, well, I don't have a picture of it, but I'll show you later what, about the remediation. But my wife was, uh, was, even though we moved into the trailer, she still was very sick. And, um, and she adopted what was called a FODMAP diet, uh, FODMAP diet. You can get this app. If you, if you're having problems with mold, um, some of the some of the symptoms. Uh, let me let me just tell you. It was, it's uh, not just digestive, but it could be uh, irritable bowel syndrome. It could be like brain fog. It could be um, uh, uh, the, there. It could be um, people candida. Uh, it could be uh, toenail fungus, uh, jock itch. Uh, my my daughter had uh, headaches. My daughter in law had sinus infections. My son had absolutely nothing really happen to him. But, but anyway, um, in order for my wife to be able to eat anything, she followed this uh, FODMAP is uh, our initials for sugars that are in different foods. And so she was able to start eating uh, food uh, that were low in FODMAPs or low in F O A D. And don't ask me what these, what they, what they stand for. I forgot, but she was able to finally start eating some foods and, and that th these are like low gas, easily digestible foods that they tell you what, uh, which ones are, which, and she followed this and actually was worked out really well for her. And she was able to, um, to finally get back on a, on a regular uh, diet. And so um, this website surviving mold is, is very, very good. Um, there's a man named uh, Dr. Uh, Shoemaker. He is like the pioneer in people recovering from mold sickness um, and, um, uh, in fact, uh, the Adventist doctor I told you about, uh, Dave, uh, John, uh, I'm sorry, Wes, 
uh, Wes Youngberg, he um, actually cites a lot of his stuff that he's done and, and uses a more natural approach. But um, but anyway, this is uh, the surviving mold is, uh, is is where I found the consultant that came down. So this is um, uh, Dr. Wes Youngberg. We talked to him on the phone about my wife, about uh, taking different supplements uh, and how to detox uh, from uh, the mold that uh, that she had been inhaling, it included uh, um, irrigation of the nasal nasal passages with uh, with with iodine and uh, um, with some other uh, uh, some other uh, things that he he's prescribed to clear out the sinuses because uh, we tested positive for for mold up in the in the sinuses too, and uh, and so uh, uh, he was I, I don't know if he's taking new uh, new uh, patients or not but we were actually consulted with him uh, on a video camera uh, inside the trailer oh and, and we ended up having to live in that trailer for two whole years and. Um, and we ended up having to lose just about all our possessions. We lost all our furniture, all because it all has you know cushions on it, which absorbs mold. We had we lost all our books. My son had built a beautiful full full uh, full wall uh, bookcase with with books, and um, and for all the books we had, and we have no books now because they're, they're all gone because they absorbed that, that musty smell and, and you just, they're just no good. We lost most of uh, clothes that are like all my suits, anything that's, that, that needs to be dry cleaned, basically you need to get rid of. Um, uh, and, uh, and then plus, not only that, the air conditioning and heating system in our house was all that flexible ductwork. We had to get rid of all, tear all the flex ductwork. You know, there's the option too, you could just sell the house, you know, and move somewhere else. That was one option, but but we decided we were, we were going to try to uh, uh, to um, renovate our house and and stay. And we but we encouraged my mother's house when uh, she had the same issue with her house. But her house was so so bad. We just hired uh, somebody. It was a mold uh, professional, and it was a lot of money. And they went in and they um, from Atlanta and they rehabbed her her house. Or um, and and we were able to sell her house. Uh, then she moved she moved in with us. But anyway, um, so uh, yeah, Dr. West Youngberg was instrumental in in, um, in diagnosing my my mother. I'm not my mother. Oh, my mother. Uh, my, she actually did consulting with my mother, but mainly my wife, and um, able to put her on her protocol to help her uh, get better. And um, there was something else I wanted to say, but uh, anyway, oh yeah. So Dr. Uh, uh, West. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Here's what I wanted to say is that. Um, Dr. Wes Youngberg is a Seventh-day Adventist, and uh, there are a lot of um, uh, uh, practitioners out there, naturopathic doctors, who who can um, uh, help you uh, with uh, mold issues. But the problem with many of them are, as I actually worked with one a little bit, just, uh, just to do some, some testing, is that um, if they look at your diet, which is uh, either a vegan or plant-based diet, They'll they'll blame they'll blame all your sickness on that because they believe that we are meant to eat a keto diet and that's what they think are that's what they think is the healthiest uh, the healthiest diet and so and, and that's not uh, what we're we're counseled to do we know otherwise because God's original diet is our 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 plants and and not taking uh, not eating animals uh, for uh, for nutrition and um, and we can be healthy on a on a plant based diet so anyway that's why the advantage of finding it. Uh, if anybody else knows anybody else who helps people with mold, love to love to know about that. Uh, Dr. West Youngberg Berg was was the only one I really Adventist I really know who who uh, who who does this, but uh, he helped us tremendously. And so he recommended that we do um, a DNA test, and then so we um, a health DNA, and so we we got twenty three and Me, and you can get a health DNA test, and and what that what that shows you is what um, uh, uh, genetic. Um, information that you have that shows a de certain defect shows you propensity or uh, or, or chances of, of having a problem in different areas of your health. And so um, one of them is, uh, let me go back here. One of them is um, a mutation of a gene called uh, 
uh, MTHRF. Oh, I'm going to show you a slide in a second, but but the, just just know that there is um, that there's genetic mutations being passed on from generation to generation. This man who, who was a non-Adventist but taught, spoke at Loma Linda, he is a Christian. Dr. John Sanford, genetic entropy was shown that that we are uh, passing on 100 to 300 genetic mutations to every generation. Okay, he's and then he's been criticized saying, well, there's just not enough natural selection going on to really to uh, to take out the bad genes. And he said, and, and basically, he's proven that there's no amount of natural selection, which will, um, which will fix this problem, man is is becoming slowly becoming extinct. And, and, and the, the, the bio the geneticist, uh, the dirty little secret is, our question is, is why isn't man extinct? 20 times over. This is an exact quote from him, which is interesting because Ellen White used that same number 20 when she said Adam had 20 times the vital force. And, 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 that, and if he didn't, we would be extinct today. And so uh, final question, you look on the line, you'll see some talks about him. Uh, he spoke at Loma Linda, but he basically said that, um, that they asked him, how long does the human race have if we are, when we won't be able to reproduce anymore? He says, don't make any plans after 2096. There's no uh, human beings being an inter interplanetary species or nothing. Our, we are doomed. And he says our only hope is Jesus Christ because the human race will cease to be able to reproduce after 2096 from the calculations. But, but anyway, one of the mutations that's being passed on that both me and my wife have is the MTHRF mutation. It's a, it's, it's a gene um, and I, my wife has a single copy. I have a double copy, which is even worse. Okay, it means it's a double mutation. And so um, MTHR or methylation is vital to the body. This is from a guy called the mold guy. You know, what is methylation or, or, or MTHR? And, uh, and, and what does it have to do with mycotoxins, which are the toxins that mold puts out? It says um, MTHFR or methylation is vital to the body. It forms folate acid for our bodies to use. Folic acid is a B vitamin. Our bodies use it to make new cells. Methylation helps us with the function of our nervous and immune system. Disruption of methylation would affect your energy production, detoxification of toxins. See, that's why it's, this is why it, it, it prevents the detoxification of mold toxins. And about 28% of the population has this issue. And, and it's probably getting worse. Symptoms of methylation mutation can vary from chronic fatigue, persistent migraines, achy joints, brain fog, memory loss, shortness of breath, and upper respiratory tract symptoms. And this is why many Seventh-day Adventists are following uh, the best diet they know. They know they know how. They're working in the garden outdoor, but they're constantly sick and don't know why. One reason why could be that they have a moldy house and they have a double mutation with, uh, with MTHFR. And so uh, there's even an MTHRFR support group. Uh, and, and because this, this is, has become such a, a problem. And so you could look online uh, some more information about that. And um, uh, finally, um, my wife uh, started uh, getting better, but uh, slightly better, but not that much. And basically, she went to attendance. This uh, uh, is called Dynamic Neuro Retraining System, where um, uh, she went to a place, basically, it's a, it's a basically a way to calm your mind down because uh, uh, you are so used to get going into panic attacks that it's hard to control um, your, your mind and your body's reaction to, to, to mold, any kind of mold, even a small, even a small amount, which we all should be able to take small amounts to detoxify small amounts. And so I, all I could say, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's, a, uh, how could I say? She had got results from it. Okay, she went there, and uh, and she was able to uh, to, to uh, retrain her with some some exercises, come back and, and start eating food again. And so there's something to be said about this about uh, DNRS is called by Annie Hopper. Okay, it's dynamic neural re, uh, retraining system for the for your mind, uh, drug free system, and basically, uh, I think basically is well, you get together with a bunch of support group with other people who have had the same issue. But people who have panic attacks and uh, and basically calm down your nervous system so you're able to, to, to handle uh, um, you know, any exposure to mold.
And so um, this is um, from uh, a Surviving Mold Doctor, uh, or, or not a doctor, Greg Weatherman and Surviving Mold Doctors. They, this is, uh, uh, this is the, the, the consultant that we hired and brought down, uh, Greg Weatherman. And, um, and see, uh, Dr. Shoemaker is the man with the, uh, uh, who, um, who did the protocol for, for people who are recovering from mold. He's more of a, of a drug, uh, um, not a natural way, but, um, but it's one method if, if that's what you need um, for, for detoxing from, from, uh, from mold. And, um, and so anyway, um, very, uh, this, this, this topic is huge. We're still learning ourselves. Our, our, uh, we're, we are back in our home. Our, our, we were able to re, re, uh, 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 remediate our home and, uh, and move back in, uh, clean, clean our home. We got new air conditioning and heating system in. And uh, my wife is much better, although we're not, we're not all 100% though. And uh, we're still uh, in the detox process and, uh, and, and working on it. So uh, next, uh, next uh, session, we'll be talking about how to test your home.